So we're just uh, on the road here. I'm gonna drive uh, with uh, a friend, uh, some friends, uh, heading towards the Sodomite uh, Parade. Should be there shortly. Uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully there will be other Christians there. Uh, this is the city of Toronto. Uh, we're driving by the beach right now. It's a very big city, uh, uh, population altogether, I believe, of five million people, and they estimated one million here today to preach to. Uh, so hopefully they hear the message and consider the warning and repent and believe the gospel. The Bible says that homosexuality is an abomination. The Bible also says that the proud in heart are an abomination. And I'm here to warn you out of love. Jesus Christ can save sinners. He died for them, was buried, and rose again on the third day. And anyone who sins is guilty before a holy God. If you have broken God's law, then you deserve eternal punishment. If you have lied, or stolen, or lusted, looked at pornography, if you've disobeyed your parents, if you've been selfish and put yourself before God, you are guilty. God has given you a conscience to know right from wrong, so you have no excuse. And the Bible says that you must repent or perish. God commands you, the sinner, to repent and believe the gospel. Go home! I came here to warn you of the wrath to come. The Bible says that he who believes not is condemned already. You are condemned in your sins and unbelief. The Bible also says that they who justify the wicked are an abomination. You ought not to justify this sin. If there was an adulterer pride prayed, I'd be there too. If there was a drunk pride, I'd be there too. You ought not to be proud of sin, because the proud are an abomination before God. God rejects the proud, but He gives grace to the humble. You must humble yourself before the Lord, and He will lift you up. And I'm here to warn you of sin, to warn you of the wrath to come. Sin destroys. It leads to death and destruction. I pray for you, sir. I'm here to warn you out of love. I come here because I want you to repent and believe on Christ. I don't get paid to do this, nor do I enjoy doing it. But I do it because Jesus Christ is worthy to be obeyed, loved, and served. He saved someone as evil as me, and He can save you. God bless you, sir. That will remind me to pray for you, sir. I hope you turn to Christ. He can save you. Please turn to Christ. Don't do that. Let's go talk over here, brother. That faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. And that's why I preach to you the Word of God, because it will not return void. God uses it unto His glory. And so I urge you, the sinner, to compare yourself to God's perfect standard, His law of the Lord, which is perfect, converting the soul. God demands out of you perfection, and God has given you a conscience to know right from wrong. I'm not just here to oppose the proud Sodomites, but all sin, for all need salvation, and all need to turn to Christ. But this is even a greater sin because it is pride. Because the Bible says, the proud in heart are an abomination before God. You ought not to be proud of your sin. If someone was proud of being a fornicator, or an adulterer, or a drunk, or any sin that they're proud of, it would be sin. It would be wicked before God, and it ought to be opposed. 
And so I urge you, see if you have sinned before God, if you have lied or stolen or disobeyed your parents, if you have gotten drunk, compare yourself not to others, but to God's standard. Because when you die, He will be the one judging you alone. You won't have your friends or family around you. It will just be you and God Almighty. And He will judge your life and send you to heaven or hell for all eternity. And hell is a terrible place of weeping and gnashing of teeth. It's eternal torment forever and ever for sins against God. And I am here to contend with you that you deserve hell for your crimes against God. For, I, for according to God's perfect standard, everything you have ever done is sin, it has been selfish and motivated of self-love and not to love God. Because the greatest commandment is to love God with all your heart soul, strength, and mind. That's the greatest commandment. And you owe it to your Creator to love Him, to adore Him, to worship Him. But you live a selfish life of rebellion. And so I urge you, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord, and He will lift you up. I will pray for you, sir. Do I have to see the light? I can see it. It's here and everyone's enjoying it. Oh, you need to turn it. to Christ, sir. You need to humble yourself. Do you realize that uh, you're the reason most of these people don't believe in God? Because you're lying about him to them? I'm not lying, sir. Truth is not popular. Truth has never been popular. That's why the Bible says, Narrow is the path that leads to life. And few be there that find it. Most of those are on the broad road that leads to destruction, that leads to hell. You love your sin more than God. You love the pleasurable sin that lasts for a season rather than your Creator. And Christ is the only one that can reconcile you, the sinner, back to God. It says, by nature, you are a child of wrath. You are His enemy through your wicked works. You are separated from your Creator. You are not His child, but a ch child of Satan. This is what the Bible teaches. And Jesus Christ died for your sins. He commended love to His enemies. That's how great God's love is to you. He died for evil people. He died for the wicked. He was buried, and He rose again on the third day. And Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. He is the only way to be reconciled to God the Father. Watch out that romance! I want your ugly! I want your disease! I want everything as long as I please. I want your love. There you go, buddy. Rah, rah, rah. I want your love. I will pray for you, sir. You don't need my love. You need the love of God. Found in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ never sinned. He lived a perfect life. And he satisfied God's wrath on the cross when he died. Because God is not just a God of love, He is a God of justice. He must punish evil. We punish criminals by sending them to prison. And God will punish the sinner by sending them to the prison of hell forever. That is just. You deserve it. But Jesus Christ took your punishment on the cross. He suffered and died in your stead. That's why on the cross, he was forsaken of his father. He said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Excuse me, sir. Yes, sir. Can I talk to you over here, please?